Hi everyone. In this video, let's look at how to perform full two port calibration on a copper mounted technologies two port VNA uh, using uh, Pico test calibration substrate and also using the two port uh, probe that's the P2102A. So, the measurement that we will be doing in the end is on the Pico test uh, evaluation board and we'll be checking the measurements at the output. All right, so before we begin with the calibration, uh, we will first make sure that we have the right definitions. So for that, we'll go to calibration, calc it. We, we either select a, a, and define a calc it. So uh, we'll go to open. And uh, for so we'll consider everything to be ideal. So we'll just enter it as zero all the way including the delay and also the same thing for short and for load we'll assume an ideal 50 ohm load and uh, we'll use unknown through so that's why we have selected unknown through here but we also has have through as in another option uh, so what will we will be performing the full two port uh, calibrations that's the solr calibration so, so hence uh, we have the unknown through defined here so now that we have it defined properly, we'll go to calibrate, full two port calibration. We will select the probe along with the tip. So we'll use the 0603, but there are other tips to choose from as well. So we'll be using the same tip to perform measurements. So that's why we're using this for calibration. And now here is the substrate. So first, what we'll do is we'll do an open. So we're not uh, connecting to the cal substrate at this time so we're just doing the open connection so you can see uh, s2 s11 and s22 phase is close to zero there at low frequencies so next what we'll do is the isolation so this is to perform isolation as well as the short calibration So, so now looking at this uh, at the VNA screen, we have S11 and S22 close to 180 degrees, so indicating a short connection. So we'll click on short, port one, port two, as well as we'll do the isolation. And next we will do the load. So for that we will look at the S11 and S22 log mag response. You can see pretty decent return loss there on S11 and S22. So we'll click on load on port one, followed by load on port two. And the last step is to perform the through cal. All right, so now we have S1, S21 and S12 close to zero, indicating a good through connection. And then we'll do unknown through. All right, and then we click on apply. All right, so now the calibration has been performed and then the uh, calibration plane has been moved to the end of the probe tips here. Uh, so now what we will do is uh, we will measure these, uh, this board. So I uh, will power it up and uh, we will zoom into the uh, response here. So we'll do the settings for it. So I'll turn on Z21 and maybe linear to begin with to see the impedance. And uh, all right, so now uh, we have it set. All right, so we'll use the pro tip and then connect to the output of this regulator. So you can see the response is kind of hairy. So we can reduce the IF bandwidth to reduce the trace noise. All right, so I've reduced it to maybe to 300 Hertz. And now we can see a pretty decent response there. We can also look at the measurements with and without calibration. 
So this is with correction on, so we'll put this to memory to just compare. And then we'll do correction off. You can see there is some small difference there. We can also zoom in and see how the measurements would look like in either the log scale or the linear scale. I can add a marker and uh, see that there is some small difference here. At the peak here, as well as at low frequencies, as well as at high frequencies. So, uh, yes, so calibration does make a difference and uh, these are the right, right steps to achieve good calibration. If you have further questions, uh, please send us an email, support at coppermountaintech.com. Thank you.